Okay, so this truck's been in a few videos before. This is a Dodge Ram 1500 with a 4.7. And I'm working on the AC. Uh, before the engine quit in it, the uh, AC is having a few problems on hot days. It would barely put out any cold air and only through driver's side. So I'm out here, got my gauges hooked up, trying to uh, figure out what uh, what's going on with this thing. I suspect it's a bit low on refrigerant. Uh, because the pressures are a bit low, but I am encountering another problem, which is this condenser fan has become very lazy. So, here, go turn this on. We don't want to run it without the condenser fan too much. So, vents are already on full blast, cold. And with that, that'll turn on the AC. And here it kicks in. Pressure clutch is running. Pressure is moving. But this condenser fan is not moving. So see now it's moving, but it's not moving nearly as fast as it should be. That is incredibly slow for a condenser fan. Yeah, it's a very lazy condenser fan. We should be going much faster than that. And that's just what the AC pressures are doing. So yeah, uh, I have to look in the AC pressures, but we gotta fix this condenser fan first. Okay, so before I start tearing uh, this condenser fan out, I'm pretty sure it's got mechanical problems, but we're going to double check and make sure. So we got two T-pins, back probes in the connector, we're going to test it with a plug in because we want to make sure that the circuit can provide power when it's under load. This uh, fan is not variable speed or anything fancy like that, it's just a one speed fan. The relay kicks on, puts battery power to the fan, fan goes full speed. Uh, very simple. So we got our meter hooked up here. We're showing 0.1 volts for the residual voltage, that's nothing. So, we'll come in here. Turn the AC on. And you can hear it load down the engine. And we're getting 14 volts. So that's good, that should be battery voltage and the fan's not spinning. Yeah, it's, it's not spinning at all now. Okay. So, yeah, not an electrical issue. Okay, so this condenser fan is kind of annoying to get out. Dodge decided to use the fan shroud as the mount for the condenser itself, which makes this complicated. So to start off, this uh, tube runs through this little hole here. So... If you leave everything the way it is, the only way to actually separate these two and get them apart is to take the AC line off, which I'm not doing. So instead, I just cut a little slit carefully right here, bend the plastic out of the way, and then you can get the shroud out from around the tube. Uh, I pulled the uh, front brace, which makes this a lot easier. It's not as hard as it sounds. It's just a couple bolts, comes right out. And then... Uh, gently work the condenser towards the front here. You see it's resting on this front uh, lower support, whereas normally it sits back in there. You have to be careful with this because this is a hard line all the way up through here with a flex line here. So you want to be gentle with that. Make sure you don't bend it. Uh, yeah, and then uh, the fuse box. That was the first thing I had to pull out. Um, just one bolt here and then move it this way. Pops out, stuffed it over there. And you can see there's the mount for it here. There's one screw there too. Uh, not really a screw though, just kind of a little retainer. And now I should have enough space to pull the condenser fan out. Okay, so we're on the messy workbench and no, I do not need you to tell me how messy with it, it is. The motor's not really meant to be taken apart, but I took it apart anyway. Um, my intention was to clean it up, maybe uh, uh, polish the commutator a little bit. I figured I would uh, fix everything, but turns out that's not going to happen. So here's the back case. Magnets are still attached, which is good. I have seen these separate on some motors, and you can see there's some 
some black grit in there. There is a bushing in there, which doesn't seem to have any lubrication anymore. Uh, this fan motor is not 100% sealed. You can see it's got vents in the front, so it's open to the environment. And if you look in here, I'm not sure how well you're going to be able to see that. Hold on, let me get a light. So you can see... Hold on, you need macro. Okay, so I'm going to try to hold this steady. I'm making no promises, though. What you can see, what's going on is the commutator is very badly worn. You can see it's noticeably lower in the spots where the brushes ride, and the brushes are just completely shot. You see over here, eh, get the light on there. You can see it's pretty much almost down to the wire on the brush over here, and then it's the same story over here. The brush is just sitting cockeyed. It's not even... It's not even close to being where it should be. You can see the slots in the brush holders. So you can tell it, it had a ton of brush material before, but they're just they're just completely gone. So um, if I really wanted to, I might be able to source brushes for this, but it's just not worth it. You'd never be able to fix that commutator wear and for a motor like this, it, it just doesn't make any sense. So um, yeah, we'll take it out of Malcro now. So, uh, the new plan now is uh, going to have to source another motor, probably just get a junkyard motor. So yeah, th this, is, this is just wonderful because um, I won't be able to actually properly diagnose the AC system until I get uh, a new motor. So that's lovely. Alright, so I have sourced a new motor. I say new, this is actually a junkyard motor. Why junkyard motor? because 1250 for a condenser fan motor that's why um, so uh, I tested this at the junkyard with a battery to make sure it spun up it spun up nice and good nice and quiet doesn't make a whole bunch of noises now you might say well isn't there the risk that this one's worn out too there is but uh, I'm not gonna try to get the camera on this because you're never gonna be able to see it but you notice there are vents in here and if you look carefully you can't you can't see the brushes, but you can see the commutator, uh, and the amount of commutator wear can give you a rough idea of what kind of condition the motor's in. So this one has barely any commutator wear on it at all, so this is in good condition. Now something to note: I thought these were all the same, but when I was at the junkyard, I noticed there were some differences. Uh, a lot of them looked like this, but had um, they had the same plug, but they had another plug on a pigtail about three inches after this plug um, so I'm not sure if there's anything else different about those the big one I saw it was an aftermarket motor but it had a much longer neck and a different mounting style so I believe they may have changed the mounting styles on certain years so when you get a new motor you want to make sure yours is exactly the same as the old one um, and another thing I'm sure people are going to ask uh, why just the motor versus the entire uh, condenser fan. Well, it was 20 bucks for the entire condenser fan and 12.50 for the motor. And I didn't need the whole condenser fan. I just needed the motor. So we're gonna pop this in, and we got three eight millimeter bolts. These go straight into the plastic. So I'm going to just run them in with a ratchet because that way I can actually feel the torque that I'm putting on them and not strip it out. And knowing my luck, I'm going to knock down the whiteboard again. now for the fan and this does have these pins here these pins need to line up with these slots on the rotor so I'll put that on there and it's seated now this bolt is reverse thread so you want to keep that in mind I know I didn't say that before I took it off but I'm saying it now it's reverse thread and for this we're just going to zip it on with the impact driver Alright, and we're ready to go back in. 
So we need to move the condenser forward carefully because we need to get the fan shroud in front of it, which I'm doing with one hand. As I mentioned before, the uh, fan shroud also doubles as the mount for the uh, condenser itself. I'll pull this tab out that I cut earlier. Place the hose in there. And there we can rest the condenser into the shroud and line up the holes. Which of course is probably going to be the hardest part. four bolts that hold the condenser to the shroud and these are the hardest ones to get to because you can't really get the impact driver in there very well. So you end up doing them all by hand. It's irritating. bottom of this shroud that fit into these holes and radiator support. Just want to make sure those are in there and they are. And I'll pop this line back into its holders. And core support. taken this thing off like three times now and every single time I just line it up based on where the bolts have left marks. And every time it works out. You can also match it up by the lines left in the paint from the edges. Um, if you really want to be careful about it, you can also uh, make a line before you pull it off. I didn't do that because I knew it was going to be dirty and I'd be able to just line up. Okay. So we've got a couple bolts out here. So these are all 10 millimeter, really long, very large. And that's not lining up perfectly, so you might not have gotten it. Yeah, this is not in exactly the right spot. bushings are meant to give you plenty of wiggle room. are going to go into this slots and then slide towards the fender one bolt Okay. 
in. That's actually a Phillips head, but you can just push it straight down. And this is the fuse holder, which came out. Uh, so we've got a couple wires here that attach to the fan shrouds. So this one should go here. And then we have our figure out how to get my hand in there. Power for the uh, condenser fan motor. I'm doing this blind, which is why it's not going in that well. Okay, there it goes. That's in, and then that will go. It should go. Double check. Just seeing if that is the indeed the hole that it goes in. Yep, that should be it. Okay, now it's ready. All right, engine's running. Go ahead and turn the uh, AC on, and the uh, condenser motor should be running now. For anybody who's wondering how much air it should be pulling through, factory uh, AC pressure chart for demonstration, about that much. <laughs> 